Hi, Ken Rolla here from freshandalive.com. I'm in my backyard again, uh, answering your emails and phone call questions. And so I uh, just wanted to um, do this as kind of a, a way to connect with people. Um, my staff typically answer phone calls and emails for me because I travel a lot, I'm very busy, uh, and I'm not in very much. Uh, and so I still, though, very much want to be able to answer people's questions and to give them a little more insight than my staff can do. So um, to that end, let's get to it. Uh, I've got a question from a person that says, uh, I saw on a YouTube video where you mentioned uh, that you make an herbal brew with the affected microorganisms, or the EM. Um, could you share more information about this brew, and do you have a recipe? Uh, okay. So I've talked about this in numerous other videos and online uh, about this um, micro mixture called effective microorganisms. Uh, we sell it on our website at freshandalive.com. It's known as uh, uh, Dr. Higa's EM1. And uh, what it is is a, a, a synergistic mixture of microbes that a Japanese professor named Tiro Higa came up with that has a lot of different uses. You can use it as a probiotic. You can use it as a non-toxic cleaner. You can use it to kill mold and mildew. Uh, many, many, many uh, uses. You can go online uh, to our website and you can look at the details on what it can do. So one of my favorite things that I do with it is make my own supplements with it. I make my own probiotic, antioxidant, nutrient-dense, high ormus brews um, using various ingredients, which I'll tell you about. And uh, you know what does that mean exactly? Um, antioxidant, probiotic, nutrient-dense, high ormus brew. What does ormus mean? Well, um, antioxidants simply are uh, foods, particles that we ingest that have a negative charge on them. And when they go into the body, they will uh, go in and latch onto and neutralize positively charged particles in the body, which happen to be free radicals and toxins and pathogens. And so antioxidants, antioxidants are very effective at neutralizing all of those uh, in the body and, and pulling them out of the body. Uh, when you neutralize their charge, then they're much easier to pull out of the body. So, um, so that's what antioxidants do. Antioxidants tend to be pigments in foods. They're, they're the colors in foods, like berries and fruits and vegetables. Um, so that's what antioxidants are. Probiotics are just beneficial microbes. And interestingly enough, in the body, microbes are what is known as pleomorphic. Uh, they can morph from being a beneficial microbe to a harmful microbe in the body if the environment in the body is acidic and low oxygen or anaerobic. And so when you're eating a steady diet of cooked food and acidifying foods, um, then you will acidify the body and create a low oxygen environment that is uh, the perfect environment for growing pathogens. And so a lot of these beneficial microbes will actually morph into pathogens in the body. So by getting on a proper whole foods living diet, uncooked predominantly, you will alkalize the body and allow it to perform the functions at a cellular level that it needs to, getting nutrients into the cells, getting waste out, and eliminating that waste out of the body. Uh, if you think about it, human beings are the only organisms on the planet that eat cooked food. No other organism on the planet eats its uh, co food cooked. And therefore, you know, you don't see these kinds of problems, particularly the health problems, and other animals that you do with human beings. So at any rate, so these probiotics, if, you in, if you've got an overabundance of pathogens in the body, by ingesting large doses of probiotics, you can actually, along with alkalizing the body, you can make those pathogens, some of them, morph back into beneficial microbes. And the ones that don't morph back, you can kill them off using parasite cleanses and large doses of probiotics. So, what's ORMUS? ORMUS is simply an acronym. It's O-R-M-E-S or, or O-R-M-U-S. That's kind of a, um, a bastardized version of ORMES, O-R-M-E-S. That's just an acronym for Orbitally Rearranged Monoatomic Elements. And all that means is that it's a, an acronym for minerals that can exist as individual discrete atoms of that mineral. Normally, minerals, are, they're all metals and they're crystalline in nature, and they, their atoms are bound together in some kind of a three-dimensional grid pattern. And there's normally 
many thousands of particles, or excuse me, many thousands of atoms in a particle of these minerals and these metals. But if you send them through certain processes like photosynthesis or vortexing in water um, or fermentation, you can break them down into individual atoms in monoatomic form and they become superconductors and they have all these weird properties and they're extremely healing and regenerative to the body. So fermentation will make these monoatomic elements and you can do things in particular to make these ferments produce even more monoatomic elements for an even more regenerative and healing brew. So by fermenting your own, you can get you know, vitamins, minerals, you can get monoatomic and angstrom minerals. Angstrom minerals are just particle sizes of these minerals where there's just a few atoms bundled together as opposed to thousands. And when you get those very small particle sizes along with the monoatomics, they can get into the cells and they can feed them. And so, you know, your, your cells can't take in rocks, you know, plants can't, can't uptake boulders. They have to be broken down into angstrom and monoatomic particles to get in and feed the cells. So by using fermentation, you can do that. You can take nutrients that might not otherwise be absorbable, break them down with fermentation, and then they can be absorbed and assimilated. So it's a great way, particularly if your GI tract is clogged up, if you've got uh, leaky gut, or if you're you're just not assimilating well, which is most people on the planet these days. You can make your own brews that are high in probiotics, antioxidants, ormies, and you can get it. It'll go right through the skin and, and be absorbed directly into the body. So that's why you want to do these brews. Now, what are my recipes? Well, I'll be coming out with a DVD and a book with all of my recipes and all my little tricks and secrets, but I'll give you a few here now uh, that we can handle in a short video. Uh, so here's a simple process that I recommend for people to do uh, to, to make this process and to increase the amounts of Ormies in your brew. Uh, so first of all, you can go to downloads.freshandalive.com and you can get my instructions for brewing a basic probiotic using the Effective Microorganisms, or EM. And you take that recipe, it has all the details you need in it, it tells you everything you need to know. Please don't email me or my staff asking for questions and details because we don't have time to answer all the questions we get about this stuff. Take those instructions, download them, and read them. It tells you everything you need to know. It tells you what equipment to buy, where to get it, how much it costs. It tells you everything you need to know. If you do what those instructions say to the letter, you will not have any problems. If you don't, you're probably going to have problems. One thing that I would point out very specifically that is very important to pay attention to is uh, sanitation. When it tells you in there to use a certain disinfectant to disinfect everything that comes in contact with that brew, you better do that or you're going to get your brew infected and you're not going to have uh, a brew. You're going to waste your time and your money. So disinfect the buckets, disinfect any utensils you're using to stir it with, disinfect the lid to the bucket, disinfect everything, the water lock, everything that's listed in there that comes in contact with that brew in the process, disinfect it with that oxygen bleach that's mentioned in there and you won't have any problems. You don't want to be making this stuff in moldy rooms or in, around any other cultures. If you're brewing kombucha or some other cultures nearby, move your brewing equipment somewhere until you get it sealed up move it somewhere away from those those other ferments or other molds and mildews or whatever you got going on. Uh, if you do that, you'll have success. It's no problem. In three weeks, you'll have a basic probiotic recipe. Now, if you want to go beyond the basic probiotic recipe, what you want to do is when you make that probiotic brew, add in your ingredients, which I'll tell you about in a moment, and let them ferment. Instead of for three weeks, you're going to let it ferment for three to six months. And yes, that's a long time. It takes time to do this, to create all of this. But when you're done, you will have gallons and gallons of this brew. And I can tell you, you know, one quart of this EM brew with just turmeric in it used to sell on my website for $46. Uh, I no longer sell that product because the manufacturer I felt was unscrupulous. But, um, but you can make your own, and you can make your own better than anything people can buy. And I'll tell you about the ingredients in a moment. But um, so, you know, three to six months, and there are some things you can do to enhance the Ormus. So if you look in those instructions, you'll see basically you're doing the same thing as brewing beer in homebrew. 
Uh, you get a five gallon bucket with an airlock, you put your ingredients in there. Basically, it's five gallons of water, a quart of molasses, and a quart of the EM microbes. You mix it up, you let it sit three weeks, you watch the pH every few days, you test the pH, and then when it hits its uh, recommended pH, you've got probiotic. Well, with the herbal brews, what you do is you throw in your ingredients, you let it sit for three to six months, and you don't necessarily want to go by the pH of the brew. You definitely want it to get down into the acid range, probably around three or four. So you don't necessarily have to let the pH drop down to, I think it's 2.7 with the probiotic. You just want to watch it until it keeps dropping and dropping until it no longer drops. And when it stops dropping, I'd let it go another week or so, and then um, then your, your brew is ready. And I mean, you could let it sit for six months to a year and it will still, you know, it will still continue fermenting. And so, but after that a length of time when the pH stops dropping, then you can bottle it and put it into a cabinet. You don't want to put it in the refrigerator. That'll kill the microbes and lose a lot of the effectiveness. Just put it in a cabinet, uh, in a dark cabinet and bottle it. Uh, whatever kinds of bottles you use, you want to leave the lid slightly just loose enough that it can off gas because it'll continue fermenting in the jar uh, or bottle for a while, so you want to ferment it. Oxygen will um, create a uh, film on the top of it. It's not harmful, but to avoid, uh, avoid getting a film and also to avoid it going bad, it's best to put it in bottles with you know, very small openings rather than a big opening like a mason jar and minimize the air in it. So fill it up uh, close to the top to minimize the air in it. That'll make it last longer. It'll last about 18 months to two years, particularly when you've got herbs and stuff in there. They act as a preservative and it'll last a lot longer. Um, so what herbs and what ingredients can you put in there? <clears throat> well, one of the ingredients I always, always put in there is turmeric because turmeric is like the ultimate heal-all herb. It's a massive antioxidant. It's got all sorts of ingredients in it that are healing to the body. It's like a heal-all. So I put a lot of turmeric in my brew. Um, and when I say a lot, in a five gallon bucket, I'll put about a, a cup or two cups of turmeric in five gallons, okay, which is a lot. And then with the other ingredients, I might put a quarter cup to a half cup in a five gallon bucket or sometimes a full cup of other ingredients. What other kinds of herbs can you put in there? Um, the easiest thing to do is to go to websites that sell herbal extracts, like my website on um, freshandalive.com. We sell er herbal extracts from godsherbs.com. You can go to their website, you can go to Gaia Herbs, you can go to Herbs of Light, you can go to any of these herb companies online and look at their herbal extracts for different applications and look at the ingredients and just go buy those ingredients in powdered form. Uh, you can go to uh, mountainroseherbs.com or you can go to um, uh, Frontier Herbs, I believe it's FrontierCoop.com, uh, but just Google Frontier uh, Frontier Herbs, and you can buy really reasonably priced, uh, powdered and, and ground organic herbs at very reasonable prices, and you can throw those into your brew. So uh, some of my favorites, I like to put in ashwagandha, hoshu wu, um, I like to put in uh, blue green algae. Um, of course, turmeric is always one. The last brew that I made had 23 different herbs in it. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, have that recipe and others when I come out with a DVD on this because uh, we're, you know, we don't have time to get into all of that and what all those different herbs are good for, but we will later in a DVD. But basically, just look at those different herbal formulas for different things. If you're looking for a liver cleanse or whatever, just throw it all in there. I mean, I put 23 different herbs in there. Then I also put rock powders in there. Uh, rock powders will help create ormus. Um, particularly what kind of herb, uh, rock powders, volcanic rock powders. Volcanic rock is high in ormus elements. So for example, azomite, which we sell on our website, it's ridiculously cheap. It's like seven bucks for a two pound bag of the stuff. You know, you can put a half cup to a, uh, a cup or so of rock powder into your brew, stir it in there, and that will create ormus elements. Uh, other rock powders, you can get the book, The Enlivened Rock Powders by Harvey Lyle, and uh, you can see what kinds of rock powders you can put into your brew. I like to use um, azomite, sometimes I'll use Redmond Minerals um, or others, but you know, that's really all you need. You throw some of that in there, you're gonna have lots of ormus. 
Um, I would avoid throwing in any kind of mushroom or fungus because those spores uh, can interfere with the EM um, microbes and spoil your batch. Um, so avoid that. If you've got anything that's moldy or you know looks spoiled, then I wouldn't throw it in there. You can take crappy supplements, uh, vitamins and minerals or whatever that are not very bioavailable and you can powder them up or blend them up and uh, put them into your brew and that will break them down and make them bioavailable, which is really cool. And for all the ingredients that you put into these brews, you want to shred them or powder them or blend them up so that they're shredded up as much as possible. That will make them much more, uh, they'll get eaten and metabolized by the microbes much more readily. Um, so for example, I bought, I, when I buy Hoshu Wu, organic Hoshu Wu, it comes in these big dry hard chunks. So I'll soak it overnight and then I'll blend it in a high power blender and that will shred it up well. Uh, and when you're done, if you put you know, all these different ingredients in there, you might have half your brew might be uh, solids, you know, uh, and that's fine, that's fine. But those solids will be much more bioavailable and you'll get much more out of them that way. And so I just, you know, when I'm decanting this stuff into bottles, I just shake it up well, stir it up well, and decant it into bottles. And when the bottles settle, they'll have sediment, so I just shake them up and I take it with the sediment. They don't taste bad. You know, I, when I made my latest brew with 23 different herbs, there were a lot of bitter herbs in there and it tasted really nasty when I first started it. But after fermentation, it broke the stuff down. And uh, when you throw a few tablespoons of it into water or juice, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's really not bad. So you can take some nasty tasting stuff and the fermentation will make it less nasty tasting and then you can throw it into water or juice, maybe sweeten it with a little stevia and no problem. It's not a, not a problem at all. Um, so that's the basics of how to make your own probiotic brews and as I said I'll have my own specific recipes uh, coming out on DVD um, in a few months. Um, but in the meantime, uh, play with it and have fun with it and uh, please don't call or email asking me detailed questions on how to make your brew because we won't have time to answer those questions. Um, just wait for the DVD if you need to and experiment. It's like cooking, you know. There's an art to it, there's a craft to it, and you have to play with it and learn yourself. I can't answer every question and every contingency for everything you're going to do. So just play with it and have fun with it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.